Just as Punghuali stopped running angrily and stood back, a sweet song arose in the darkened gallery. Punguzali immediately knew that the voice was that of Synthan Amuthan. She laughed cheerfully. At that moment she even forgot that the footsteps came from a different direction. That's it. Is that you? Yes. Flowerpot. Where are you? Come like this. Here I come. Saying that, Sendan Amuthan came in front of her. Well you scared me. Why are you following me like this? Punguzali. I have travelled for many days from Tanjore to see you and to hear your sweet song. Even after coming here, I waited so long without seeing you. I accidentally saw you and kept running away. Why did you run like that? Where, let's sing a hymn. A good place to sing, an even better occasion. If you don't sing, I'll sing another song myself. I'll wake up all the sleeping animals in this forest and run away, look. Father. Have mercy on the crescent moon. Enough, Athan. Stop singing. So you sing. Hearing this, Synthan Amuthan immediately said in a soft voice, Punguzali. Another person was coming after you. I shouted loudly to warn you. He and your brother's wife had a secret conversation this evening. Do you know who he is? He said. Then again, in a loud voice, what are you saying? Do you sing? Shall I sing? Lord Shiva danced in the burning forest. Can't you just sing in the forest? He shouted. After singing like this, he said in a soft voice, Amuda. How did you know that I have come? She asked. Punguzali. I saw a boat coming from the top of the lighthouse. I came here looking for you thinking that it might be you. At the same time some of the people of Palvur also came this way. I did not see you in the boat. But I saw my friend Valavarayan and the prince. I told Valavarayan about the arrival of the men of Palvur. Both of us carried him and put him in the hidden hall. Alas! What a mistake you have made! What has become of the boat? We overturned the boat in the stream so that if anyone saw it, it would be suspicious. Why did you stop singing? Why did you stop singing? Sing the rest! Synthane Muthan said the latter part in a loud voice. Forgot, Amuda, there's a song about this millionaire boy. Do you remember it, if you remember, sing it. Oh. Remember. Then Synthane Muthan hurriedly said and sang. As soon as the song was over, Punguzali said, that's it. Is the one who followed me gone? Is he hiding by the side? She asked in a soft voice. We haven't heard any footsteps since we stopped here. He must be hiding somewhere beside here. Do you know who he is? Bungazali rushed and said, What do you not know? You know very well. Is it Sundarar who sang about millions of owls? Listen here. Did you see? Amuda. During Sundaramurthy's time, owls and crows hooted in this forest just as they do today. But now even humans are screeching like owls in this forest. I heard such a voice a while ago. Do you have any idea who that evil person is? Punguzali asked in a loud voice. After listening, she said, I will see if I feel like shouting. Do you hear the voice of an owl? She said. Then, she called out three times like an owl. Such like an owl's voice. Sing divine hymns in honey sweet voice. Where did you learn this? Amuthan asked. I learned from a sorcerer. You must know how to screech like an owl to cast a spell. You even know magic, hey? Know something. Are you testing my magic? How's the exam going? Now there's someone hiding beside us listening to everything we're talking about. Look for it if you want. Just as he was closing his mouth, he heard a rustling in the forest. The magician Ravi Dasan came out of hiding. Ha ha ha. He came smiling. Woman. So Sama Sarah? I thought you only knew tricks, do you even know magic? He asked. Ah Badaka. Is that you? Girl. 
Do you know who I am? You are the one who tried to kill the prince in Sri Lanka. You couldn't do it. So you cast a spell in the middle of the ocean and summoned a whirlwind to drown the prince and his friend. How do you know for sure they sank? Did you see it? The bodies of the two men washed up on the shore. I dug a hole on the island of the giants and buried them. Traitor! May the thunder fall on your spell. Woman! Don't try to deceive me. Didn't you make them survive by casting a spell against mine? Oh! How did you know that? This Ravi Dasan has an inner eye in addition to the outer eye. I can know what is happening at a distance of a hundred years with my magical powers. So why are you asking me? I'm asking to test you. Tell me where you're hiding them. Or I'll burn you both to ashes right here. Said Ravi Dasan. His outer eyes were now blazing like flames. What? Are you telling the truth or not? Om Hrim Ram Vasht, here I am going to show you the power of my magic. Bungazali trembled with fear and held tightly to Synthan Amudan. She told him in a soft voice, I'm going to run now. You stop him. She said. He shouted at the wizard, don't do anything to me. I'll show them where they are. She said. Come with me. I'll show you. Saying that, she left and walked towards the opposite direction of the ruined hall. The wizard looked to follow her. Sendan tried to stop Amuthan by grabbing him from behind. Pungujali started running. The sorcerer Sinthan threw the elixir upside down with one push and followed the flower pipe. Pungazali ran as fast as a deer. The wizard ran to catch her like a deer. But catching her is not an easy task. Pungujali also stopped as if she was tired when the wizard thought about whether to stop chasing her. The wizard chased her again. Behind both of them, Sendan Amudan was also running after tripping over the plate. He often thought of running to the hidden hall and warning the people there. At the same time, he did not feel like leaving the flower alone with the magician. Punghuali stood on a hill. Instead of waiting there for a while, she turned around and clapped for the wizard. The wizard stood next to her, taking a deep breath. When he thought of holding her tightly and giving her four slaps on the cheek, Punghuali said, Look at my lovers. She said. The wizard looked in the direction she pointed. He also saw the scene that Vandiyadeva had seen the previous time. Here and there in the swamp the flames appeared and disappeared with a gurgling sound. Even though Ravi Dasan knew the reason for that terrible appearance, his fur shivered at that moment. Sorcerer! If you know magic, cast a spell to drive these marauding devils away. They're making me cry. She said. Ravi Dasan was furious. Woman! Are you trying to trick me? He roared. Why should I deceive you? Didn't you drag me and beat me saying I'll show you where the prince and the mighty are? You didn't believe me when I said they were dead. What else? Is it true that the prince is dead? Will you swear? Why order? Look at the sky. Ravi Dasan looked at the sky. A comet was visible. Don't you know that if a comet appears it means death to the royal family? It just happened. Said Punghuali. Woman. Then give me the candy in your hand like this, is there any left in it? I'm thirsty for running with you. Bungazali suddenly started running again. She jumped down from the hill and ran towards the swampy terrain where the looting devils appeared. Ravi Dasan lost consciousness due to rage. He got into a frenzy that he wanted to catch the flower girl and kill her by strangling her. He ran headlong after her. After running for a short distance Punghuali suddenly bent down a little and moved to one side on all fours. Ravi Dasan, who was chasing her at a high speed, could not stand where she was standing. He stood a few feet away from her. He turned and ran to catch her, but could not. What happened to the legs all of a sudden? Why aren't they moving now? Why are they stuck? What is this? Does the chip come up from the soul? No, no. The legs are going down. Ravi Dasan looked down. Yes, he found his feet sinking in the mud below. 
atom by atom, inch by inch, his feet were slowly sinking into the mud below. Ravi Dasan realized his danger and tried to get out of the mud. He tried to kick his feet. His efforts did not bear fruit. It seemed as if some goblin was tugging at him from under the mud. Bongujali laughed cheerfully. Sorcerer! What are you awake for? Are you trapped in a goblin's mouth? Is it just to cast a spell? She said. The wizard trembled between panic on one side and anger on the other. Bad sinner! Is this your work? He raised his hand. Didn't you want to take my neck and discipline me? Instead, discipline my hand. She said. Ravi Dasan restrained his anger and said, Girl! I swear! I have done nothing to you, give me a hand and lift me to the shore. He said. Punghuali laughed ha ha ha. I can't shore you up. Summon all the demonic fiends bound by your spell. She said. Ravi Dasan was buried up to his thighs in the mud. His face was horrifying. His eyes cast a red shade of light like firecrackers. He stretched out his hands and grasped the shore beyond the mud. He grasped the base of the sedges that grew there. Again he tried to come out of the mud. But he could not move his buried legs. Blessed are you, woman. Save me! He yelled. Meanwhile, Sendan Amuthan arrived there. He knew in an instant what Ravi Dasan's condition was. There was a hint of compassion in his eyes. Pungujali looked at him and said, Come on, let's go. She said. Oh! He's going to be left like this. Why do you want to watch him until he's buried in the mud? No, no. If I leave him like this, I'll dream all my life. Let's leave him alone. That's it. He wanted to strangle me. God will punish him for his sin. We can save and go. Then give me your upper towel, said Punguzali. Amuthan handed over his towel. Punghuali tied one end of it to the base of a bush near the burial pit. She gave the other end to Ravi Dasan. Wizard! Look here! Hold on to the end of this piece. If you pull too hard, the bush will be uprooted. So hold on gently. Don't try to shore yourself up. Someone will come this way at dawn. They'll shore you up. She said. Oh! Do you have to spend the whole night like this? I can't, but kill me and go away. Punghuali ignored his cry. She started running back the way Sendan had brought Amuthan by his hand. The mage's voice was heard as they climbed over the hill and descended into the forest beyond. After the voice disappeared, that's it, you've come at the right time. How did you come here? Why? Punguzali asked. I did not like to stay in Tanjavur after my dungeon experience. The soldiers and spies of Palavur often came and gave me trouble. So I went to Palayare. Kundave Devi sent me here. She told me to tell Vandiyadeva that the prince was in great danger and that he should be brought to Sudamani Vihara at Nagaipatanam and left. I also saw you. I wanted to hear your song. You have seen a good time to listen to the song. It is true what Ilay Abradi said. The continents that have happened to the prince are not like this. Cold fever has come with the intrigues of the enemies. Yes, I saw it. Two of us carried him and took him to the hidden hall. We had a lot of trouble. Punguzali. The Buddhist monks of Nagaipatanam Sudamani Viharam are well versed in healing medicine. They will cure the prince. How to get to Nagapatanam? Through the canal. How do you get through the canal? Have you lost the boat? Is the boat in the water? Take it back and it will go away. Then we must leave tonight. We can't all go in that little boat. There is no need, Punguzali. We have discussed and decided all that. Valavarayan will go straight from here to Palayare. You and I should take the prince in a boat and take Nagaigapatanam to him. Funguzali was creeped out. Travel with the prince again. On the canal, by boat up to Nagaipatanam. There should be no danger on the way. Both reached the hidden hall. As he approached the hall, 
Santhan Amuthan clapped his hands vigorously. Who is there? Vandiyadeva's harsh voice heard. I am Santan. Who else? My uncle's daughter. Vandiyathevan came to the door of the hall and peeped in. Isn't there anyone else? No, why doubt? Speak softly, the prince is asleep. Someone came in here a little while ago. I came out thinking it was you. You weren't. It looked like a wizard. After. Just then the voice of your song came out. I thought you saw a good time to sing. Fortunately the wizard heard it and went back. Did you see him? We see. What did you do to him? I didn't do anything. She's the one who dropped him waist deep in the mud pit. Even her voice was heard a little. Yes, the trumpeter also sang a song. When he heard that, the young man seemed to have a sense of self. Who is singing? he asked. I said, Odakara oh, girl. He fell asleep listening to the song. Pungujali was mesmerized again. Did she not only sing? She also screamed like an owl. That also caught my ear. I thought that something miraculous was happening in the forest. I thought that you, Athan and Maman's daughter, were celebrating Vasan thoughts of Am. What nonsense is this? said Punghuali. What else to do? Gotta spend the night anyway. Vandiyathevan said. No, we cannot survive if we are here after dawn. We must leave at night. At that time somewhere far away foxes started howling. Amidst the screeching sound, an owl's voice was also heard. Sendan Amuthan trembled. Before his mind's eye he could see the wizard buried in the mud, the foxes howling around him coming closer and closer, the wizard screeching like an owl to drive the foxes away. Vandiyathevan and Sendan Amuthan woke up the prince without breaking his sleep. Pungazali then continued. The moon had risen when they reached the bank of the canal. On the bank they made the prince lie down on a tree. Vandiyathevan and Santhanamudan got into the water leaving Bungazali by his side. With great effort they lifted the sunken boat and brought it to the shore. The prince woke up. Thirsty. In a very soft voice. Said. Pungazali, who was watching him from the side, poured the milk from the jug into his mouth. After drinking a little milk, the prince said, Punguzali, is it you? It seemed as if some divine maiden in the heavenly world was pouring nectar into my mouth.